Hello everyone, thank you for joining our event. Today we're gonna speak about drawing templates of Woodorf and Mentor software. Nowadays, furniture becomes more and more complicated and it's quite hard to understand how it can be produced without having a detailed instruction. And a big portion of it is the drawings. My name is Igor Bardowski, I'm sales and support engineer of Woodwork for Inventor team. And today I'm gonna explain you how Woodwork for Inventor allows you to make a drawings automatically using the templates. There is one thing though you need to remember. This is not a hands-on or self-study material. If you will find that uh, you need to get more information about how to use drawing templates in your company, please contact our reseller or partners for advice. Let's take a look at traditional workflow. Probably you already saw this slide before if you participated in our events. And the idea here is that it took a lot more time to make a manufacturing data, which includes uh, drawings, specification, CNC file, and nesting. One of the important steps here is the drawings. So now we're going to find out how the amount of data spent on the drawings can be significantly reduced. That's basically our goal. We want to reduce the time spend it for manufacturing data preparation as much as we can. And one of the portion of this data shrinkage can be the usage of the drawing templates. Each company have unique vision about how the best drawing should look like, so we must have a tool to match their demand. That was our goal when we developed this drawing template uh, scheme in the drawing generator. So let's find out what can be done in order to send the model data into the drawing. What we can do in order to send the data from the model to drawing? We can utilize a template, which stays exactly in between the model and the drawing. When we are making those drawings, we want to make them in our unique way. For instance, if we're making the drawings for a solid wood parts, then we should use another template for a solid wood parts. And the same idea goes for all the rest types of the drawings we want to have in our company. There might be different reasons for it. Maybe we want to outsource some of the production to the other company, and we want to get those drawings to be shaped in the way that our partners want that can be done easily with this concept. Now let's find out how it works. And we will start from the template of Autodesk Inventor drawings. As many of you know, they can be adjusted using the style editor. You can define your own sketched symbols, sheet formats, and many more stuff. However, it's not enough for the woodworking. And we add some woodworking data in those Autodesk drawing templates, which includes the information about how we can place the views of assemblies or parts on the drawing, we can filter what uh, the material would be shown on those drawing pages. Also, we can define how and where we want to put annotations, what symbols should be used for grain direction, edge banding, and other stuff. Also, we can have woodworking parameters in the title block, besides the parameters of Autodesk Inventor. Besides that, we also can enter the parent item name into the view of a part, which is very significant improvement in case if you are working with big assemblies because then you can know what is the pattern for this given part. Besides that, we also generate hull table and annotations automatically. And of course, we produce the dimension for the range box and the hull the link scheme. Now let's find out what you are getting using Autoplot tool. First of all, you automatically get all the views of your assemblies and parts that you have in your model. And trust me, this is a very big improvement. If you will just get those views placed automatically, it will save you a bunch of time. So this is a huge work when you need to just place all those views on the drawing without missing any of them. But besides that, Woodwork allows you to generate texture direction indicator. For some of the patterns, it's quite hard to say how the grain goes only by a picture. That's, we, that's why we must have some indicator which shows how the grain goes. Besides that, we have whole IDs because we need to drill this part in some way. So we need to know what holes are presented here, how they are arranged, what tools should be used, and so on. So we must have whole IDs. Most of the parts is covered with some edge bending. That's why it would be good to see those on the drawing. And Woodwork allows you to do this very easily. As you can see in red, there is a shape which is covered by edge bending. Different colors can indicate different thickness or different type of the edge bendings. If it's not enough, we can also apply some IDs. So then this Edge bending code allows you to significantly reduce this, the time which is needed to estimate what edge bending should be applied here. Okay, now besides that, we have the dimensions of a part and workpiece shown on a drawing. We get workpiece contour and base point or CNC processing if you have one. When we are doing the drilling, sometimes we are forced to use manual input. And in case if we need to use manual input, onto the machine, then there is a tool which we call a hole table, which contains all the coordinates of all the holes in the part 
and this allows you to reduce the time needed to enter the data about the drilling into the machine. Moreover, in the title block, we get all the information about the workpiece. We get the name, the size, the type of material, and also we get the parent assembly name. Okay, if you're speaking about the parent assembly, this can be shown on a title block of a drawing. If you have made CNC programs for the drawing, those will be also shown like a base point you can see here. When we generate the drawings of assemblies, there is a part list. So we can match these part list items with our product structure in a BOM of Fuller for Inventor. Now let's gonna find out how this template works, what can be adjusted, how we can make it work for us. So first of all, I need to say that uh, those changes of uh, how the template works are applied on top of existing Autodesk Inventor drawing. We need to add some extra information which can be done using Autoplot setup in a drawing environment. So first, let's start from the definition of the title block. What we can do here? We can define the codes and names of the properties that need to be shown in this title block. Because there are many names and many codes of, this, uh, of those parameters that can be shown in this title block, we utilize dedicated tool which we call keyword constructor and this tool is used to generate the keyword according to your needs now let's find out how we can define the views their position on the drawing the arrangement on the drawing how this can be done first of all there is three type of items we can show on the drawing which include assembly then part and multiple components so when we speak about the part we can define how much area of the drawing space can be occupied by the view of a part then we need to speak about the projections what projections we should see there we can just mark what projections must be generated beside the main view which can be defined like the front view of the view group and also of course you can change the appearance how those views will be shown on the drawing if you want to see hidden lines or, or you want to remove them all this is possible the same way as you normally do manually in inventor a different kind of uh, object can be shown using different lines. So as you may see here, uh, we have uh, different properties to define how cover material will look like. For instance, for the veneer, edge banding and paints, we can define different colors depending on the cover material thickness. As you can see on the left, we have various thicknesses of cover material, and then we can define different colors for them, different weights for the lines, as well as different type of the lines. If you're using black and white uh, monochrome printer, then you can just uh, define the line types. It can be continuous, touched line, and so on. So only by different types of the line you can see what uh, covers was applied. Now let's move to the range box. What the range box is, it's like the external size of your part or the workpiece. You know that if you set the grain direction, which goes, let's say, uh, diagonally in a part, then your workpiece significantly increases. And you may want to see the size of this workpiece on your drawing. It's possible to do the fuller for, for inventor without any problems. So you can say uh, what you want to see. Do you want to see a range box of a part? Or maybe you want to see a range box of a workpiece. Then, of course, you can define the line type, weight, type, and uh, color. Uh, besides that, of course, we can generate the dimension for those range boxes. And here you can define how they should look like. Okay, moving to the next step. When all the views is on the place, we need to care about how to apply a drilling. There is various ways about how you can apply a drilling scheme on the drawing. One of those is when you place a whole table with the coordinates. When each hole have its own its own um, coordinate on a whole table. The other way is when you grow those holes by type. And in whole table, you only define the type of um, hole. And then you need to apply regular dimensions in order to estimate where those holes will be resided. Speaking about the hole definition in the drawing, there is various tools which allows you to change the way how the hole on the drawing will be described. And those of you who worked with a hole tool in Inventor knows that uh, we can utilize different symbols and different parameters to describe the hole. We can do exactly the same here in Woodwork for Inventor. There is two keywords like main hole description and counter hole description. And those can be adjusted the way that is used in your company. Speaking about the hole indexing, there is a nice tool which allows you to add the prefix or the suffix to the hole depending on the position of the hole, its type, and so on. In case if you have uh, some holes which is repeatedly used in your company, for instance, if you use the same hardware on a daily basis, there is a big chance that uh, those holes will be also the same in different 
uh, parts. So you can just define uh, dedicated letters for those holes like X, Y and so on. And then you can des describe what those letters means. For instance, uh, there is a through hole of 8 mm diameter and so on. And when you see this letter on a drawing, you understand that this is such a kind of holes which is well known. And only by this symbol you can decide about what hole the link operation should be applied. Uh, besides that, we have a tolerances for the holes. If you're working with uh, expensive wood or you're applying uh, complicated technological processes, you may find that some uh, tolerances may be needed. In Woodwork for Inventor, you can define the different tolerances for different kind of holes, different diameter of the holes, different type and so on, and you can show them in a drawing in such a way. If you're speaking about the hole dimensions, in some of the cases there is no need to place a hole table. You can just stay with regular dimensions and we can just show those dimensions in such a way as you can see on the screen. You can define their precision, how they should be positioned and so on. Now let's speak about the symbols. Different companies utilize different symbols for marking different objects on the drawings. And we can define how those symbols should look like. For instance, here we are speaking about the texture direction. As you can see, this is our default symbol of the grain direction. However, you may found that this symbol should look a little bit differently. For instance, like so, as you can see on the screen. Maybe there, are, there is another example. You use another uh, symbol for marking how the texture should look like. You are ready to make those changes without any problem. So here, as you can see, you can define your own source of those symbols. You can draw your own sketched symbols in this file. And then you can define what symbol should be used for various purposes in the drawings. This makes this uh, symbol usage very flexible for your needs. Now it's time to speak about an output. What to do when we are finished to make the drawings and we want to generate the views and generate the file files of the drawing. So there is many ways of producing the drawing output. We can generate different files, dedicated files for each of those components of our drawing. Or maybe we want to place multiple drawing components in one page. Or we want to have some mixture between those two. Maybe we want to have a parent assembly placed in separate file and the child items placed multiple pages document. So we are allowed to do this. Moreover, this tool also allows you to define uh, the type of the component that will be shown in the drawing. And you can use it like a filter. For instance, you can apply the drawing uh, template and collect only those components that was made from a solid wood and vice versa. Then uh, you can apply another uh, template and produce another set of drawings. Some of those may require additional information, like in case if you are outsourcing the production of those components, maybe you need to add some extra details to make the drawings self-explainable for workers of another company. But if, you, if uh, we are working uh, locally, maybe there is some convention between the workshop and the design depot and we can just maybe to just put less information into the drawing. So this can be also an option. When we have a bunch of drawings, there is the question how to arrange them. And there is many options about how this can be done. We can filter them by the name, by description or part number. And this allows us to structure the drawing in that way that is mostly suitable for our needs. Speaking about the export, it might be that there is another participants in the data exchange workflow, like not the designers, but maybe uh, suppliers, maybe some managers or even the customer. And for them, we need to send the drawings in the format that is, uh, that's not require some CAD system to be opened. And this is like DXF, PDF or DVG. So Woodwork for Inventor allows you to generate those drawing formats beside the main drawing format that we are using here. So now let's gonna find out how it works. First of all, what we're doing here, we are starting an auto plot and just saying that we want to generate the drawings. And as you can see, after a few moments, what we get here is like a set of the views of all the parts that we have in our assembly. Now you can imagine how much it will take by just trying to place all those views manually. Besides that, as you may see here, we have a, the dimension of the part, we have a hole chart with all the information needed for making those holes. We know uh, what parent assembly for this part, what is size, what is the material type, and so on. And as you know, here we are using material replacement tool, which allows you to define uh, different materials with different codes and names for the part. 
even without changing them in a the model. Let's find out what should be done in case if there is a need to make the changes in the drawing. Okay, let's say that we want to do something with this uh, concept file. And because this is a skeleton driven assembly, it's enough to just change something on a skeleton level and you will get those changes in assembly. You need to uh, remember that uh, we add extra information only by Woodward for Inventor. This means that in case if you want to do the update operation in Woodward drawings, you need to also use some special update tool, which can be found there. You can say that you want to refresh the drawing. As you can see, since then, there is a changes appeared on the drawing. In such a way, you can change whatever you want. You can change the materials, you can change the hardware in such a way, change the, holder, uh, change the position of the holes on their tape type or their count. Now let's speak about the benefits that you are getting using Woodward for Inventor Drawing Generator. First of all, those drawings are generated very quickly. There is no need to spend a lot of time on them. And you can uh, try to develop your uh, model more precisely according to the uh, drawing information. Uh, those drawings can be highly customizable because they are driven by a template. So if there is a need to change something, you can change the template and changes will be shown on the drawings. Uh, templates are embedded in inventor file. This means that there is no need to have some additional information, some additional files elsewhere. It's enough to just have one single file with all the data in it. Those changes, those annot uh, annotation placement happens automatically without user interruption. So you can just automatically place annotations such as grain direction, uh, edge bending and so on. Besides that, we uh, automatically place all this information. This means there is no place for human mistakes. There is no more missing components and you get very fast updates. Even if you notice that there is something wrong with the model and you notice this only when you have the drawing generated. So then you can go back, make the changes in your concept, update those changes in a drawing and get suitable result for the next step in the production line. We are getting some questions from our from our customers and some of those repeated. That's why I just uh, suggested to make familiar of those. And let's start from the first one. Customer often asks if it's possible to add woodwork annotation to existing drawings. Yes, it's possible to do. Even if you have some legacy data, you can define the template and this legacy data can be enriched with woodwork for inventor annotations. If you want to share the data between other participator in your data exchange workflow, then you might want to uh, generate DXF and PDF files. And the answer to the question, can I generate other files, is yes, you can generate those if you, if you need to. If you already have your own drawing templates, you may want to add some extra information to make them suitable for Woodward for Inventor. And the question is how to do this. And it's very easy. You can just add some extra information for existing inventor template and in such a way you will make it suitable for a woodwork for inventor. If you want to save uh, each part to the separate part uh, to a separate file, it's also doable without a problem. You can just change the purpose of the template and this allows you to save each part to a separate file without any problems. This is useful in case if you are working with full system then you may want to have a set of uh, data about your part. And then if you have like a part and the drawing beside, it's very nice to have them grouped. It's also doable with Woodwork for Inventor. Next question is, can you apply the template to the same model to filter part by their type? As we already know, we can apply uh, Woodwork for Inventor templates to work like a filters and with the same model, you can apply two or more templates to generate two or more sets of drawing. Each of those can have different kind of components inside. Maybe you want to just have a solid wood component separated from the rest of the model. So it's doable. You can just apply two uh, templates and you will get two sets of drawing. Each of those can look differently with different annotation, different type of data in a title block and so on. So at this, I'd like to thank you very much for participating in our event and I hope that we will see you in our future event. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Good luck. Bye bye.